Okay, so over the last six months, we've seen many different large language models come out. And we've seen both proprietary models, we've seen many good open models, etc. But one of the things we haven't seen as much as we've seen in the past is the whole area of text embeddings. And certainly text embeddings are not as sexy as the latest, coolest language model, etc. So that kind of makes sense. Now, in the past couple of weeks, though, we've seen some really interesting things come out. And specifically today, as I'm recording this, we've seen some really interesting things. So in the past couple of weeks, we've seen Mistral release text embeddings, and these have certainly done really well. We've also seen Google announce that they've got new text embeddings coming. But the problem with both of these that I have is that using a proprietary model for your embeddings, and I've said this many times before in regards to the OpenAI embeddings, is the fact that you're really locking yourself in to that particular ecosystem. Now, for certain use cases, I think that's fine. But when you want to index a whole bunch of documents, and especially if you want to keep them locally or keep them somewhere where you're going to be accessing them yourself and not through some API in the cloud, then you want to go for local embeddings. And if we come and look, we can see the Mistral ones look like they're really good embeddings. But sure enough, when we come over to the Mistral Hugging Face page, I'm not seeing them there. Same for the Google embeddings and same for the OpenAI embeddings. And that brings us to a series of models that have been released today, which I do think are really interesting, not only because they're really good embedding models, but because Quen has actually uploaded these on Hugging Face. And you can basically download them, you can use them on-prem, you can use them on your local computer. And the cool thing that we're seeing with these is not only are they releasing one embedding model, but they're actually releasing a whole series of embedding models. So you can see that they've got sizes from 0.6b, right through to 8b. And then on top of that, they've also released the GGUF version, which probably means that we'll see these incorporated into Olama or LM Studio pretty quickly as well. Let's have a look at the actual post for this. So you can see that the release here is not just a single text embedding model like I talked about. We've actually got this whole sort of release focusing on embeddings, retrieval, and even re-ranking in here. Now, just to give a quick shout out to Cohere, this is one of the things that Cohere focused on was this whole sort of suite of models where you've got not only the embeddings, but you've also got a re-ranking model. And in their case, they've even matched them to the actual LLM as well. And we can see here that clearly Quen has taken a page out of that book. And what they've basically done here is actually fine tune some of their language models to become both embedding models and also re-ranking models in here. And we can see that all of this has been released with an Apache 2 license. And on top of that, these are actually the state-of-the-art models that are out there for multilingual embeddings at the moment. So we can see the MTEB. This is a leaderboard that I've talked about in videos in the past. Now, it seems that these latest embeddings are so new that they're actually not even up here. They're not even up on the Hugging Face leaderboards as I'm recording this. But looking at the benchmarks that Quinn has actually released on their GitHub, we can see that their biggest model here, the 8B model, seems to be beating out everything else on that leaderboard there. And for me, that's probably not the most interesting one. The thing I would say is that this 0.6B is getting insanely good results for basically what is a tiny model. And when you're building some kind of RAG system or something like that, you really want to have a very fast embedding model so that you can embed a lot of content quickly. You can do your queries and lookups really quickly, and you can do retrieval and do re-ranking really quickly as well. So this is where this entire sort of suite comes together is that not only have you got the embedding models here in the three different sizes, but you've also got these re-rankers in three different sizes as well. So you can actually pick what is going to be the right size and sort of accuracy trade-off that's going to be the right thing for your use case. All right, so if we look in here, we can see that basically what they've done is a lot of fine tuning of these. For the embeddings, they're using a sort of typical use case where they've got the end of sequence token sort of gathering up the embeddings and taking that output there. Another interesting thing with the embeddings is we can see for both the embeddings and the re-ranking, you can actually use instructions in here. So one of the really good embedding models, probably back, gee, maybe almost like 18 months ago now, 
came out of Hong Kong University, which was that whole instruct embedder. And that sort of introduced this idea that because you could set these things up, you could get, put in some instructions there so that you could get embeddings in relation to text, but also in relation to perhaps something like e-commerce versus general search versus other things. So it's nice to see that Quen is allowing you to change this on the fly as you go through. Now, the ranking model also lets you do these kind of things as it's doing text pairs comparison for the outputs here. So you can see when we look in the GitHub that they're talking about the instructor where, et cetera. Another thing that's really cool about these is that they're also using the Matryoshka representation learning. This is what the MRL support in here actually is. And what that means is that rather than just take the sort of full length of the embedding, you can actually cut it up to be smaller and they're trained in a way that actually allows them to learn representations at say a vector of 64, maybe 128, 256, et cetera. Now, the other thing we should point out too, is that because these are fine tunes of some of the original Quen3 models, the sequence length on these can go really long. So we can see here that on all of the models, we've got a 32K sequence length. Now, I wouldn't recommend that you use that sort of length. I don't think there's a huge amount of use cases for that. Generally, you want to keep your sequences much shorter if you're going for something like RAG. But it does mean that we can go out to 8K, no problems, as opposed to something like the Gemini embedding model, which can only do a max of, say, 2,000 tokens in there. Okay, so my only complaint after looking at these is really the fact that they're not multimodal embeddings. And it's really nice to see in here that they've listed future work is that additionally, we plan to expand our multimodal representation system here. So it does look like they're perhaps working on a series of multimodal embedding models as well, which will be good. All right, so just jumping in to show you this in code. Basically, these use the Transformers library, or you can use the VLLM library if you wanted to set it up in the cloud or something like that. We can see here that we've got some things for formatting the instructions into the correct format for going through this. Loading up the models here, I've just been using the smallest models to go through these. And like I talked about before, you can actually change the instructions here. So you can see here, we've got this sort of system of judge whether document meets the requirements. This is for the re-ranking one that I'm looking at here. Based on the query and the instruct provided, note that the answer can only be yes. And then if we look at the task here, we can see that, okay, given a web search query, retrieve relevant passages that answer the query. Now, what I've done is basically put in, what is the capital of China four times? And we're comparing against four different responses. So response two is about gravity. That's from their example. And response one clearly is the capital of China is Beijing. But also when we put in some sort of red herrings in here of Shanghai is a big city and is often mistaken for the capital. And Shenzhen is like the capital is often thought of as the capital of tech products in China. And then pairing these together, you can see here, this is going to show what you're going for the instruction, for the query, for the document. And then we can just run that through the model and get the scores out. And we can see, sure enough, the one that talks about Beijing is very high. The one that talks about gravity is very low. The Shanghai one's still very, very low. And the Shenzhen one is higher, but still nowhere near the context that's actually in the Beijing document that we had there. So these embeddings should be able to be dropped into whatever you're using. If you're using Langchain or you're using something else to actually do rag or some kind of agentic rag, etc. you'll be able to re-index on these. And the cool thing is here that you're in control. You're the one who picks the size that you want. You get to be able to choose this trade-off between accuracy and latency, etc., which is unbelievably important in rag. And often people don't realize how important latency is often even over accuracy. So go and check the models out. They're up on Hugging Face where you can check these out. I think they're also available by an API from Quen, though I probably just run them myself locally, or you could even run these in something like a cloud run with a GPU environment and be able to control the embeddings for any kind of vector store, et cetera, that you wanted to use here. All right, so I'm quite conscious that over the past year, I haven't made a lot of videos about RAG. It is still one of the fundamental uses of LLMs. I'm still finding it being the sort of go-to application that organizations want to start out with. 
even more than or incorporated with some kind of agentic system as well. All right, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to get back to doing some more videos about RAG and things related to RAG, etc. All right, as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.